Brother Shalom, it's Brother Nassan here, New Wine Congregation of Israel. I uh, want to give all honor and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. All right, we're going to do a quick lesson. We're going to do a quick lesson through the Spirit. All right, let me share the screen. It's going to be called the Cup of the Lord. All right, the Cup of the Lord. Let's go to the Bible. All right, Matthew. Matthew chapter 20 and verse number 20. Let's start there. All right. It says, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children, the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on thy on the left in thy kingdom but Yahweh answered and said ye know not what ye ask are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with they say unto him we are able right so that's a lot of us through the spirit right we think when we come in this truth, we truly believe that we could drink of that same cup that Yahweh Shah drink of and that we could be baptized with that same baptism that he was baptized with. Right. When you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. Right. Temptation to faint. Temptation to give up in this truth. That's what you're going to be tempted with. To so go back into the world, the allure that you're missing out on something. That's out there. All right. He said, verse 23, and he said unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. So he said, yeah, you're going to drink of this cup because you want to serve me. You want to follow after me. What was the cup that Yahweh Shah drank of? All right, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 3, and verse All right, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. It says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So the Lord, his baptism is with fire, right? What does the fire do? Well, let's go to the book of Sirach. Let's get the classic. All right, a classic scripture. Everybody that's if you've been in this truth for a little while, you know this scripture, right? We read it all the time. All right, Matthew uh Sirach chapter two and verse one. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Like I said, the temptation to go back into the world, right? Re verse five, it says, For gold. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So the Lord is going to find out if you're gold or not. Right. When you put gold in the fire, it's not before it goes into the fire. It's not the beautiful gold that you see that you buy out of jewelry store or if you buy gold bars. It's not that it's got tin and, and, and iron and, and dirt and mire all type of things that are connected to this gold that have to be purged out like the fire heats up the gold and it brings all the impurities to the top right it causes all the impure it brings all the impurities to the top of that gold and they scrape that off that's called the dross right that's what this truth is going to do to us 
This truth is going to bring all of your impurities to the top. It's going to bring all that lust, all that covetousness. It's going to bring all those things that you didn't know were inside of you to the top. And you're going to be forced to reckon with it, right? Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's, let's look at the cup that Yahweh Shah had to drink of. Isaiah chapter 53. And we're going to read verse 3. Right? It will start at verse 1. It says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Right? So that's us. When we go out in the streets, we report that Babylon is going to be destroyed. That this place that we live in, in is filthy, full of abominations. Right? Who have believed our report? It says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form of comeliness. And when he we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So this is going into Yahweh Shah. Right? This is going into Yahweh Shah, how he wasn't going to be uh, admired for his looks. He wasn't going to be the type of person that you looked at him and he was like, oh, man, that must be the Messiah, right? Not so. It says he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows. He's a man of sorrows. Why? Because when you come into this truth, you understand, you understand that there's really not much to smile about. Right. When you when you see the, the state that your people are in and you get vexed in the spirit. Right. It's not a whole lot of hanging out. It's not a whole lot of just being a part of the crowd anymore. Once you come into this truth, you got you got something different going on than everybody that you knew when you was in the world. Right. So Yahweh Shai says a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Nobody tried to cheer him up, right? And that may be you in this truth, right? Let me get this in the book of Sirach. Uh, chapter. Uh, 21. The book of Sirach, chapter 21, and verse 20. All right, it says, A fool lifted up his voice with laughter, but a wise man doth scarce smile a little. Right? And that's us in this truth. You become quite austere once you start to learn the things and learn and understand more about that cup that you're going to be drinking right when you first come in you may be excited right not that you should lose your excitement or zeal for the lord but you're kind of just ready to just kind of cut somebody with the scriptures but as you learn as that as that drink goes down it becomes more and more bitter in your belly you understand it's it's not a laughing matter we're trying to prepare our souls and spirits to die if that's the if that's the will of the Lord, right? So it says a fool lifted up his voice with laughter. You could tell somebody who don't really know what's going on because they kind of always playing around, right? That brother, that sister who's serious, right? That that it says a wise man does scarce smile a little. That was Yahweh Shah. He's the wisest of all the men. The wisest of all the men. Right. He does scare smile, but a little because, you know, he knows what's going on out here. Right. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's go back to Isaiah. So he was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, meaning he was sad most of the time. Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 14. All right. It says, as many were astonished at the. His visage was so more, more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So when Yahweh Shah got tortured, his visage was marred, 
beat up more than anybody that's ever lived. To lock him more than Emmett Till. That's how marred his visage was. He was beat down more than any man. And he died for a whole bunch of people that didn't love him. Right? So that's that cup. He's like, do you really want to drink of this cup? Are you ready to be not liked by people who said they loved you before? All right? That's the that's this cup that we got to decide if we want to drink of. All right? Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 22. And verse 19. It says, and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. So he break that bread. His body was broke. It didn't break any of his bones, but they beat him down, man. He said, likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. So this cup that you got a drink of is the blood, it's the New Testament, right? Going through what we're going to go through in this walk, the suffering, the ridicule, right? The um persecution, that's a part of the new cup. You can't be partaker of the New Testament if you're not being ridiculed, if you're not being persecuted on some level, right? That's just a part of it, right? Let's keep going. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to jump down to verse 31. It says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. So Satan want to sift you out of this truth. He, hey, when you start, when you start building brothers and sisters spirits up, praying for brothers and sisters, hey, Satan, you the one. Satan want to sift out. He don't want to sift the Israelite out that's barely in the truth, that's still smoking weed when nobody's looking, the one that's still going and hanging out with their friends in the club. He don't care to sift that one out. He could care less about sifting that one out, right? He said, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren, right? It says, and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. So Peter thought he was ready. He walked with the Lord. He was like, I know I'm ready, man. I'm, 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 I'm 10 toes down for the Lord. Some of us got that same confidence. But in a day of adversity, you're going to faint, right? You're going to faint. Let me get this precept. Right, Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. So you don't know how strong you are, how much strength you got until some adversity comes, until you get put in that fire. Peter thought he was sure, right? Peter thought he was sure. He said, and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Right. He said, you're going to deny me three times, Peter. You're going to deny me. Hey, some of us going to deny the Lord, man. Some of us going to get that joint pass to us and you're going to take it. That's you denying the Lord. That's you denying the Lord through the spirit. Kind of just take your fringes off. Kind of put the pants back on and you ain't got your dress or your skirt on no more. You denying the Lord. Right? Some of us are going to faint in the day of adversity and it's going to show that our strength is small. But that's the cup. The cup is that, man. Let's go to the book of Luke. 
Luke chapter 13 and verse 50. Uh, 12, is it 12? Let me see. Yeah, 12. In verse 50, he says, but I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straight until it be accomplished? Meaning I'm pained until I accomplish my mission. Right? He says, suppose you that I come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. So he didn't come to make you friends with everybody. He came for division. He came to separate you from everybody else in this walk, in this world. Because they're not on the same path as you. They're on a path to destruction because they're not serving the Lord. They're denying the Lord every single day by not keeping the commandments. Right? He says, from, thence, from henceforth, there shall be five in one house divided. Three against two and two against three, right? He said households are going to be divided, man. Hey, your, your wife is not going to agree with you in these last days. She she may be in a uh, so-called being the truth and start uh, hearkening to a whole nother doctrine, right? That's a part of it. Can you, is that going to make you fall out of the truth, brother? Or your head may start, thinking that he don't have to, he can just eat whatever he wants. He might start saying, hey, well, I don't got to kind of have a beard. No more. I don't got to wear fringes. We can keep the Sabbath day whenever we want to keep it. Is that going to make you follow behind him in his unrighteousness? It shouldn't, right? It says, from henceforth, there shall be five in one house divided. Three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father. The mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother. And the, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Right? So he came for division. He didn't, came, he didn't come to put everybody together. Right? Let's go back to Luke. I mean, yeah, Luke chapter 22. And verse. Yeah, let's read from verse. 40, right? He says, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. Right. The temptation is to lead the truth, to stop serving the Lord. That's the only temptation. Once you come into the truth, the only temptation is to stop serving the Lord, to go and start back doing what you want to do. That's the temptation. He said, pray that you enter not into temptation. And when he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down, and when he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So Yahweh Shai was tempted to lead, man. He was tempted to lead. He was tempted and touched at all points with our infirmities. The Bible say that. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. So he asked his dad, he said, look, if you could take this cup away from me, I don't even want it. Right? The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse 15. It says, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin so the king was tempted any any temptation that you could think of he was tempted with chiefly to lead the truth he said father if you could take this cup from me i don't want it i don't want it that's how bitter this cup is that's how serious it is when you say you want to serve the lord it's not a it's not a social club this is serious business, man. 
this whole thing, this whole period we got right now, this grace period is designed to get you to build up your spirit, to prepare yourself to die if need be for the Lord. That's what it's about. So it's serious business, right? Let's go to the book of wisdom of Solomon. Why we got to prepare to die? What we why, what are we going to be doing that's going to make people want to kill us? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 17. Well, we'll start at 16. Matter of fact, let's start at 14. It says he was made to reprove our thoughts. So we are created to keep the law. In keeping the law, we have to correct sin when we see it. Hey, it's people in the truth that don't like that. How much more so the people that's in the world? They don't want you to correct them and, and tell them that they going off. They don't want you to do that. All right, it said he was made to reprove our thoughts. Let's go to the book of John. We're going to come back. All praises to the Most High. All glory and honor to the Most High. God. Kahalaya, Right? John chapter 3 and verse 18. It says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. All praises to the Most High. So if you believe on the Son of the Most High God, Yahweh, you are not condemned. But he that believe it not is condemned already. You dead already if you don't believe. Because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of the of, of Yahweh. You don't believe in the name of Yahweh, right? Does that believe does that mean you just gotta know his name is Yahweh Shah? Let's see. What is his name? What does it mean to believe on his name? Revelation chapter 19. Right. It said, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. So when you believe in his name, you believe in the word of God. You believe that you have to do what the most high God said do. Right. So if you don't believe in his name then you're condemned already because you're living a life of sin. All praises to the most high. Right, it says, and this is the condemnation. Back in John chapter 3, verse 19, it says, and this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So what is that light? Let's go to the book of Proverbs. What is the light? Chapter 6. In verse 23, it says, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So in this truth, somebody correcting you is our culture. It's, it's, the, it's our way of life. It's our heritage. So if you are so called in this truth and you don't like correction, then you don't you're not in the truth. You're still in the world. You got on fringes. You got a beard. You got a head wrap on. But your spirit is still in the world. Your spirit is still in the world. Let's go back to John. He said, and this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. The law is here. It's being taught. And men love darkness rather than light. They like they sin more than they want to keep the law. Because their deeds were evil. That light shines, it shines and points out everything that you got going on that's wrong. So men don't like the light, right? It says, for everyone that doeth evil hated the light. If you doeth sin, you hate the law. According to the Bible, neither come into the light. You come nowhere near this law, lest his deeds should be reproved, right? So that's why they're going to kill us. Let's go back to wisdom of Solomon. It says he was made to reprove our thoughts. All we talk about is the law. You can't do that. The Bible say do this. They don't like that. What? Let's see. Verse 15. He is grievous unto us. 
even to behold. They don't even want to look at you. They hate to look at you for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. Our ways are of another fashion. The fashion after the Lord and his laws and his wisdom. That's how our ways should be. That's the cup of the Lord that we got to drink. Being really, we love to suffer for the Lord, man. It's it's not a, it's an honor. And it's an honor to suffer for the Lord. Right? So lucky, verse 16, it says, we are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He, uh, he abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed and maketh his boast that God is his father. This is why they're going to kill us. This is why you're going to be put to death for serving the Lord. Because you're telling all of these people that aren't serving the Lord that they're counterfeits. They aren't real. They ain't, they're not doing what God said to do. You know how many people go inside of these churches and cry? And they really believe that they're doing the right thing? And you sitting up here telling them that God don't hear their prayer? That'll make somebody kill you. Because they believe that he does hear their prayer. Right, it says, let so this what they're gonna do is say, let us see if his words be true. Let us see if he mean all of that that he out there talking on the street corners with that microphone, with them 10 brothers behind him ad living. Let's see if he mean it. That's what they're gonna do to you. Right? It says, and let us prove what shall happen of in the end of him. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemy. Will the Lord help us? Will he deliver us from the hand of our enemies? The Bible says that he will. The question is, do you believe it? All right, this is the cup of the Lord. It says, let us examine him with despitefulness and torture. Torture, not the kind of torture you're comfortable with. Torture like they got your baby, your newborn baby, and they just chopping her up little bit by little bit. They got your spouse and they just raping her in front of you. And she, she kind of looked like she like it. Because she didn't really believe anyway. What well, the, the kind of torture that you are uncomfortable with, man. They say, let us examine him with despitefulness and with and torture that we may know his meekness. And prove his patience. Are you still going to say. Kahala Yahweh. Bashim Yahweh Shah. While that torture is going on. While they ripping your fingernails off. Hey I'm I'm just. I'm just you know. Regular dude. I can think of some things that are. That are, that are hurt pretty bad. Esau got into a, a science though. All right. It says let us condemn him. With a shameful death. For by his own saying, he shall be respected, all right? So they're going to examine you with torture, all right? Let's go to the book. Let's go to chapter three, matter of fact. This is the cup of the Lord. It says, but the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. The, the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God. They're not going to be tormented in the, in the lake of fire. There shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. And their departure is taken for misery. So when you die, they look at it like that's it for you. You, you're a rap, finito, right? Slaki. We're gonna go through it in this work, in this walk, man. Do you want to drink of this cup? Is the question. Is this cup too bitter for you? Is this cup too bitter for you? Let's go to the book of Psalms. How many of y'all want to drink of this cup? If you're not going through it right now, in some way, shape, or form, you might not be serving the Lord the way he wants you to. Psalms chapter 34, because right now this is a this is a, a heating period, a purging period, right? Let me get this real quick. Psalms 34, 
and 19. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Right? We're going to go through many afflictions in this thing, man. There's no way around it. Let's go to Romans. Chapter 12. It says, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. What do you do with a sacrifice? You burn it. You're going to be put in that fire, man. The Lord want to burn you alive. And he didn't even want to smell it and say, oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. That's what I'm talking about. It's a sweet savor to him. It says, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So it's our, it's our reasonable service to be burnt alive by the Lord, man. By the Lord, we going to go through it. Let me go to Matthew. Matthew 24. And verse 25. He says, Behold, I have told you before. So the Lord told you before you picked up that plow. Hey, you're going to go through it in this walk. You're gonna be burnt alive. Are you ready? Hey, you thought it was cool when it was when it was 10, 15 of us all ad libbing and saying, bring it out. It was cool then. When you learn that you can have more than one wife, when you learn that hey, you the you the greatest people on the earth, it was all good then. But now that you gotta go through this fire, what you gonna do? It's the cup of the Lord, man. It's the cup of the Lord. Right? Let's go. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 3. It says, but verse 1 again. It says, but the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. And their departure is taken for misery, and they're going from us to be utter destruction. But they are in peace. And when we leave this body, we're in peace. If you die righteously, you're in peace, man. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord, right? Let's go to the book of Second Ezra. Second Ezra, chapter three. We're gonna come back to wisdom, Solomon. Second Edges chapter seven and verse six. It says, there is also another thing. A city is builded. All right, it's lucky, man. I'm a little under the weather. Throat. But all praise to the most high. All right, it says, there is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field and it's full of all good things. So this city is the kingdom. It's full of all good things. There's no more death, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more getting sick, no more jobs, right? No more bills. It's full of all good things. It says the entrance thereof is narrow. And it's set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left, a deep water. So on the right hand, you got fire, temptation. All right. On the left, you got water, doctrines, philosophies, all these different things to get caught up into. Hey, that, that heat, you feel that heat. You feel that temptation walking on this narrow path and a little bit of that water might splash up on you. Are you going to fall out of the truth? Are you able to drink of the cup? All right. 
It says, and only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. So you can't go at the same time as the whole congregation. You can't walk through this to get to this city with Brother Nashan. You can't walk with your spouse or your son or your daughter. They got to go through by themselves. This is the cup of the Lord. It says in this city, now we're given, if this city, now we're given unto a man for an inheritance. If he never shall pass through the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? You can't get to the kingdom without going through this narrow path. It's only one way. This way is Yahweh Shah. That's the only way to get to the kingdom. And he said, he gave you the cup like him. Huh? There you go. Drink that. Are you able to drink it? Like he told Zebedee's uh, sons. Are you able to drink this cup? That's the question. It says, if this city were now given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive his, this inheritance? And said, I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so is Israel's portion. So Israel's portion, Israel's lot is to go through this one way with fire and water every day every day you gotta take you gotta take a sip of that cup every single day until it's all gone mm. lucky every day you gotta drink of this cup right he said, this is Israel's portion because for their sakes, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was the creed that now is done. So when Adam went off by listening to his wife, when he went off, that's when we had to go through this narrow road to get to the kingdom, to get to paradise. It says, then were the interests of this world made narrow, full, full of sorrow and travail. Then they are but a few and evil. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the interests of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. So you used to, we used to just be in paradise. Now you got to go through travail, evil perils to get to the kingdom now it says if then they that live labor not to enter into these straits and vain things they can never receive those that are laid up for them you gotta go through it man that's the only way you gotta go through it that's the only way to get to the kingdom right it says now, therefore, why disquiet is thou so thyself, seeing thou art but a corruptible man? And why art thou moved, whereas thou art but mortal? He, so that's a lot of us. When you start to find out everything we got to go through, we go over prophecies, and it's like, dang, we're going to get killed. There's going to be a famine. Some of y'all get depressed. Some of y'all start looking sad. Because you, you you feel like you're not ready. You're not able to do it. But that's the point. Yahweh said, behold, I told you before. We walking in the spirit of Yahweh We telling you before it happens. You got to know. That way when it comes, you're like, okay, they told me this was going to happen. Boom, I'm ready. If I die, I'll be right back. Right? Why you disquieted yourself? It says, why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come rather than that which is present? Why you look depressed? Because I told you, you got to go through it. This the cup. This the job. 
the persecution, that's it. That's what we got to go through. Why you look crazy because your, your, your grandma ain't talking to you? Because your mama don't, don't speak to you no more. Because all them friends that you had when you was in a world that was ready to slide and, and, and pull triggers for you, now they don't have nothing to do with you. Why do you look surprised? This is the fight. This is the job. It says, why has thou not considered in thy mind the thing that is to come rather than that which is present? Why are you worrying about this world instead of worrying about the thing that's to come? Then answered I and said, Lord, that bearest rule thou hast ordained in thy law that the righteous should inherit these things, but that the ungodly should perish. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for why. For they that have done wickedly have suffered straight things and yet shall not see the why. So they're go if you're going to die either way. You might as well die for a righteous reason and get the kingdom. The ungodly are going to die. He said, and he said unto me, there is no judge above Yahweh and none that have understanding above the highest. For there be many that perish in this life. A lot of y'all going to die because they despise the law of Yahweh that is set before them. That's why people are going to die. You don't love the law. You might be doing it, but do you love it? You may, you can do it and still despise it. Do you love it? If you don't love everything about the law, then you're going to die. Plain, right? It says, for Yahweh have given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things. It's a, it's a, you're imagining a vain thing if you're like, oh, the Lord is merciful. I can just sin however I want and I'll probably still get the kingdom. That's a vain thought. You're not going to get it. It says what? And deceive themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the most high that he is not and knew not his ways but his law have they despised and denied his covenants and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works so you got to do the works in this thing man not just sitting back not holding another brother coattail or a sister's skirt trying to get into the kingdom on their works no one person at a time one person at a time, right? It says, and therefore, Esdras, for the empty are empty things, and for the full are the full things, right? So you got to be rooted in this thing, man. You got to think that it's a joy to suffer for the Lord, right? Let's go to the book of Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 12, it says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. So you got to be ready to suffer. If you suffer, you're going to reign with him. It's just like a Marine. Two Marines got respect for one another because they both went through the same thing to become Marines. Two people who got doctorate degrees they got respect for each other because they know the studying and the hard work that went into becoming a doctor, right? It's the same way with, if you get the kingdom, the Lord is going to have respect for you because you suffered like he suffered. You were a man or a sister of sorrows like he, like he was. You doth scarce smile a little too, like he did. You became austere through the spirit. Because you are aware of all, you are aware that some of these people that smiling in your face every day are going to be the same ones ready to cut your throat in that day. You know these things. It says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Right? 
Let me jump to chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, shall suffer persecution. If you live godly, you're going to suffer persecution. But why disquieteth yourself with the things that are present? Why you're not focused on what the reward is, right? Let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Again, chapter 3. It says, verse 3, and they're going from us to be utter destruction. When they kill us, they're going to think we're utterly destroyed, but they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. That's the hope. We're going to reign with Yahweh Shah. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For God proved them and found them worthy for himself. He put you in that fire and you didn't crumble. The fire proveth the potter's vessel, like it said in the book of Sirach. You got to put it in the fire. It's saying having been a little chastised. Hey, your, your best friend from, from high school not speaking to you no more is a little chastised. Them whipping your back till you start to cry is a little chastised. None of us are going to get as disfigured and marred as Yahweh Shai. So anything that we could go through for the king is a little chastised. They shall be greatly rewarded for Yahweh proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in a furnace, have he tried them and received them as a burnt offering? He want to burn you alive in his truth, man. Why are you thinking that it's supposed to be easy? The cup of the Lord is bitter. Why you look confused as though you're supposed to be living this great life in the truth? Hey, the only great times that we have is when we get to serve the Lord. That's the only time I have fun. Anything else is, is, uh, is annoying to me. It's annoying. I'm vexed with the fit. What it is and um, let me get that in um. I think it's First Peters or Second Peters. Yeah, Second Peter. Chapter two and verse seven. I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making an end sample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So Lot was vexed. He wasn't in Sodom and Gomorrah just living his best life, fitting in. He was an outcast. He didn't fit in in this world. You shouldn't be fitting in in this world. You should be vexed every single day. You should not scare smile a little if you truly are serving the Lord, man. You can't have one foot in the truth. You got to be all in this thing, right? It said, let me go back. It says, as gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. We get burnt alive in this truth. A living sacrifice, right? It says, and in the time of their visitation, they shall shine. You're going to shine when the king come back. That's when you're going to get your reward and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. That's when you're going, that's when it's time for you to, to be smiling and, and, and living it up. We're going to live it up in the kingdom. It says they shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and their Lord shall reign forever. They that put their trust in him shall understand truth and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. 
for grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. The Lord love you in this thing, man. You just got to show him that you love him. There's no question that the Lord love us. The question is, do you love him? That's the question, right? It says, but the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. So the ungodly are going to be punished in this thing, man. You can't get, hey, it says verse 19, for horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. And that's this generation. It's going to be horrible. You might have lost your business serving the Lord. You might have, you might not have much money. You might see that cousin or your or your brother, your sister, they making good money. And they ain't keeping no commandments. And you like, damn, why, why me? Why? Hey, the Lord prove it you right now. Is, is this life living as good as you can in this life worth missing out on the things that are to come? Of course not. Of course not. This is the cup of the Lord. Suffering for the Lord. Going through that fire. Being a living sacrifice to get to the reward. Right? So all honor and all glory to the most high God, Yahweh. I pray, I pray, I pray that this was edifying, that this was help, able to help you build up your spirit. Understand what you're partaking in. This truth is not a social club. It's not a clique. This is a way of life. And we got to suffer persecution as a result of it, right? So I'm going to end it there. Our honor and glory to the most high God. Yeah, how about I send you how a shot? And with that, I'm going to say, Shalom.